most people associate the month of November with either Thanksgiving or some other holiday or tradition that they do this time of year. But there's an entire subculture of the internet that focuses very much on and has their own holiday and tradition, so to speak, for the month of November. Hey everyone, my name's Christian Verstappen, and I have a lot to say about many things. I want to talk about No Nut November. For the uninitiated, No Nut November and the entire concept is largely spurred off of the No Fap movement, which is essentially a movement where has some good elements to it. It's at least portrayed to a lot of young men as kind of taking back control of their life, not letting their life be consumed by the desires of their own sexual impulses. Of course, it primarily focuses on masturbation, but some people go as far as to have it focus even on if they're in a relationship, they just like don't, they're not intimate with their partner for a month, which I think that side of it is more so a joke. And there are a lot of people that absolutely just kind of treat this movement as a joke, which if that's all that it was, I don't think it would be a problem at all. However, there are many people that don't view it as a joke and actually take it very seriously. There, what in the fuck? Oh, wait, are we good? Okay. <clears throat> There are absolutely aspects to it that are good, like... Most people that partake in this very specifically focus on the no fapping, no masturbating to porn. What this means specifically varies from person to person, but generally they're talking about the mainstream porn, you know, the things you would find on either the hub or browsers or any website like that. And while I will say there are definitely issues with the adult entertainment industry and things of that nature, I don't think in and of itself there's anything wrong or unhealthy with watching that kind of uh, entertainment, that kind of media, nor is there anything wrong with pleasuring yourself regardless of your gender or anything of that nature. But this is something that people want to talk about. People always, there's always a surge of these kind of things, especially during November when we have No Nut November. I like how, you know, they even made the logo look like Pornhub and stuff like that. That's that's kind of cute. The problem with this, and I'll point to a video here that I would actually re highly recommend looking up. The Cavernacle has actually done some really good videos on the NoFap movements and things of that nature. There is an aspect of it which is very nefarious uh, in that there are people that legitimately believe and kind of push this idea of what's known as the Jewish question and that porn specifically, and really all media in general, but especially porn, is developed by the Jews to hurt everybody else. It's basic Nazi propaganda, Jewish question bullshit. That said, there are absolutely benefits to self-control, obviously, and that is true with anything. But there are also a lot of, there's a lot of toxic, I guess you could say positivity. There's a lot of negative and harmful aspects with how people go into the concept and the movement of NoFap. Now, again, a lot of it is jokes where people be like, oh, I, got, I have these superpowers now and all these different things. And that very much, obviously, it doesn't happen. But there is some science, and we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Actually, we might actually get into that video first. But there is some science behind the benefits, as it were, to NoFap. One of the things I'll say, and take this as you will, it is an anecdote. I will acknowledge that. My experience with this was simply that 
when I tried to curb my habit uh, for a while and I went several months without any self-assisted release. I, that was when I actually had started dating, as I had uh, talked about previously before, my now ex-fiance, and made one of the worst decisions of my life getting with her in the first place. I legitimately don't think that I would have been with her had I been not so pent up, we'll say. <laughs> so that's one thing to keep in mind. It's funny, too, because there's always, there's, there's always different... I do keep, of course, going to the video we're about to cover in a minute here. There's always different things people will say about this. Some people give advice, which I very much agree with this. This is something that uh, a dating coach that I actually recommend, uh, Adam Lyons, says is that it is a good idea to masturbate before you go on a date. Why? There is something, and this is, a, this is something that is actually more scientific and psychologically true, and that's the concept of post not clarity you know if you've ever hooked up with anybody or you've just jerked off and you've thought after the fact what the hell am i doing why am i watching this who are what not why am i with you that kind of thing right you you essentially put yourself in a in a mindset where you've cleared the pipe <laughs> you've you're at a point where you can say okay now i've released this i've had this release that i i needed my body was craving now I can think clearly again. It, it really does work the same way as being hungry or anything like that. If you're hungry enough without any satiation of your appetite, you're going to be way more likely to have things that are unhealthy for you. And if you're hungry sexually, the same kind of thing can happen. But I think that's enough of a preamble. I do want to also mention here, because we are about to go over this video, women are attracted to sexually disciplined men and why it's important. I was like, show the thumbnails here, so here you go. Now, this is a video by Courtney Ryan, and Courtney Ryan, similar to How to Beast, as I have talked about before, is all in all a very good content creator as far as helping men kind of with their struggles and things of that nature, pointing out different societal issues and stuff like that. She does have she has some pretty good advice as far as style and stuff like that goes. I know there are men out there that very much um, put forth this idea that, oh, don't listen to a woman on what she says she likes in a man because women don't know what they like and things like that. I don't agree with that. But um, yeah, 100%. She definitely does good content. I would recommend her content overall. Every now and then, though, she has a bit more of a socially conservative bend with some things like this, although she's not disparaging of people who do uh, want to hook up or anything like that, she will, we'll get into that in a minute here. But this notion, this, this, this idea, as we're about to get into here, of how she says men like, or men like, women like um, <clears throat> sexually disciplined men, and why it's important, we'll get into it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're gonna to be talking about a topic that so many of you have asked me about, and surprisingly, I have never covered it on the 400 videos that are on my channel. So again, real quick, I have to point out, as always, because this is an important thing, I've talked about the importance of optics and appearance and all that good stuff. Yes, she is a conventionally attractive woman. That is important to this. That's not to say that she's some puppet or anything, but that is to say that her message comes across better because she is conventionally attractive. I'm aware of that fact. I just want to point it out because I like to point out the reality of that. And that is all about sexual discipline. So specifically why sexual discipline is so important and attractive. There are plenty of videos out there on the internet about no fap, semen retention, no nut November. As we're going into November, I thought this was a pretty fitting topic. So obviously, Let's just address the elephant in the room. I cannot give you a man's point of view on why sexual discipline is important, uh, again, from a man's point of view because I haven't experienced it, but I can give you why it's attractive and important from a woman's point of view and why you know practicing sexual discipline and things that go along with that are so attractive to women. And coincidentally enough, I had this video planned and I was on TikTok scrolling looking for content and I came across this. So I'm gonna show you this quick little video, get us all on the same page and then share my thoughts with all of you. 
my man is not sexually disciplined and he's so immersed in sex and wanting to watch porn and wanting to do this. A man having sexual discipline. Okay, first of all, just notice that the other woman was cut off in the middle of her sentence. I never think that that's a good idea when you like show a clip of somebody saying something and then you don't even let them finish their full sentence. That comes across as, I don't know, I just don't like it. I'm going to not full screen it here so you can see the full... Uh, person talking here. In fact, let's go back to that other person. You can see what I mean. And he's so immersed in sex and wanting to watch porn and wanting to do this. A man having sexual discipline is probably one of the most important characteristics that a man can have. Or at the very least, a man being interested in cultivating sexual discipline. Now, what does sexual discipline look like? It looks like a man who doesn't watch corn. It looks like a man who is not begging or thirsty for intimacy from random women or from you. A man who has standards and isn't just going to engage intimately with any woman that throws herself at him. It looks like a man who is interested in creating healthy sexuality with his partner and not just repackaging the internalized patriarchy, which is basically corn and the things that we see in corn. Without these qualities, a man is completely weakened. He is not dependable and he cannot be trusted. He will also likely harm you by cheating or by expecting too much of you and being misogynistic. All right, there were some things that were a little dramatic. Do I want to? Yeah, I'll go over. I'll go over uh, what you said before Courtney does. Misogynistic. You not dependable. And he okay, so the first thing about this. Is it important, is it good, rather, to have control over your own impulses, your own desires, all of that stuff? Absolutely. If you are somebody, though, because like many things, as sexuality is, sexual desire as well is a spectrum. There are people who fall on the higher end, and there are people who fall on the lower end. Both are perfectly valid. And there are people who are completely asexual, not even into sex at all. Although I don't know specifically how uh, much about asexuality, I know that I have a uh, sibling who identifies as ace, but other than that, I don't really know too much about it. Uh, I understand that ace people can as well experience sexual attraction, it's just a little different. But let me, regardless, for years, and this was largely due to my uh, religious upbringing and my kind of purity culture-ish stuff that I grew up with, I very much believed that I was what's what I now know as demisexual, where I had to be romantically interested or emotionally, I should say, interested in a woman in order to want to be physically interested in her as well. Now I've realized that's not true at all. And that's not true for a lot of people. I am somebody who personally, and I will be very upfront about this, I am very emotionally as well as sexually motivated. The two most important things for me in a long-term romantic partner are that we are emotionally and sexually compatible. Compatibility, at the end of the day, is like the biggest thing, but those are the two main things that are the most important, that we can be there for each other, we can like, care for each other, we can love each other, we can have fun, intellectual, all sort of uh, conversations and stuff and just enjoy each other's company. Um, as well that we are really intimacy in general, not even just sex, but just intimacy in general is a very important thing to me. And it's very important to a lot of people. The problem is that when people talk about these kind of things, they will downplay the importance of this aspect of a relationship to a lot of people. So that first woman that was cut off, for example, where she was saying how her man's always, you know, potentially watching porn and other different things. Uh, he might actually have a problem if he's like, say, choosing that over her or something to that extent. But I myself have been in a few long distance relationships and relationships where we couldn't see each other that often. And yeah, that was something I definitely did a lot because I wanted my partner, but I, I couldn't actually have my partner. And just real quick on that too, I don't think that if you, if you watch porn, or maybe I can understand like paying for an OnlyFans or something that's I can understand that being different, but generally speaking, you know, just watching porn, looking at, you know, hot models on Instagram, anything like that, none of that is necessarily cheating. At the end of the day, though, what you, what is considered cheating in your relationship is whatever you and your partner have determined as going out of bounds. With that said, though, 
this narrative that's pushed of this this whole thing that like oh he's not just looking for anyone look if you're somebody who you're just keeping your options open whether you're male female whatever you are um it is perfectly valid to keep to want to keep your options open until you find somebody that you're really wanting to commit to see the problem is a lot of people kind of push and talk about this narrative where it's like they act like it's bad if you have multiple options going at the same time something that i'm trying to cultivate for myself and i think that is a very healthy thing for especially men but really people in general is to date multiple people at the same time not committing to somebody right away but date multiple people at the same time and then you can decide you can make a better decision out of those people out of that pool if you will who do you actually want to be with who do you want to commit to and if you're somebody who wants to experience a more polyamorous uh, lifestyle or if you don't even want a relationship in the first place that is all valid too and again the problem with these kind of narratives that these people uh, talk about is there's no room for that variance that, that that's the issue with these kind of things it's like if you want that committed relationship if you only want one person if you want any of those things that is perfectly valid but at the same time it is also perfectly valid if you either want to just date around for a while if you just want to casually hook up with people if that's what you want to do all of that is perfectly valid um all of it is valid whatever you want to do good for you cannot be trusted just, just to be clear um the important thing with that is that you're being honest and respectful with whoever you're with whether that is a long-term committed relationship or that is a someone you're just hooking up with you don't want to lead people on or anything like that right you don't want to do the whole like the reason players get such a bad rep for example is because they will often hook up with women and you know kind of use them and manipulate them and, and say and women do this too but you know they'll manipulate and use people and say like oh yeah i i, I really you know i i'm really falling for you or something like that when they they just want to smash and there's nothing wrong with them just wanting to smash there's nothing wrong with them just wanting to hook up but the important thing again is that you you are honest about that if you're leading somebody on if you're lying to them that is where it becomes an issue but if you're honest you say hey i'm not looking for anything serious you know i'm just trying to have some fun any of those kind of things that's valid too and the key thing here too is that if you are in that situation and the person that you're wanting to hook up with doesn't want that that's fine walk away on to the next one you'll find plenty of people that just want to hook up casually and on the other side of the spectrum you'll find plenty of people that are only looking for something serious the important thing is that you're respectful of others and you do not uh invalidate or degradate them for choosing a lifestyle that is different than yours and the things that we see in corn without these qualities a man is completely weakened he is not dependable and he cannot be trusted he will also likely harm you by cheating or by expecting too much of you and being misogynistic okay few things on that so first of all i don't know if she was doing this intentionally but i do want to touch on that idea that oh a man will be weakened by this that is although probably not what she was trying to signal towards specifically that is part of the jewish question where you have that idea that oh uh, men are weakened by you know releasing their energy through either master which is funny by the way just real quick on this it's funny that people act like it's so different to you know as, as far as the physical aspect the release of either just self-gratification or being with an actual partner goes the difference is the the difference isn't there physically the difference is emotionally the difference is if you're you know you're really connecting with this person or you're not really connecting with them but you're connecting with them you know not like super deeply but you know you're connecting with them on some level and you're having this experience with another human being but as far as physically and what weakens or strengthens you or anything like that it would work the same way and we'll t we'll get to a video on that in a minute too but first we're going over this one all right, there were some things that were a little dramatic. Maybe some things in there that were a little 
a little dramatic for me. I do think it makes a lot of sense. And I'm gonna break this down and talk about some different points and why this is so important and attractive for men to have. Again, from a woman's point of view. Number one, the first reason I wanna talk about is self-control. Let me start off by saying men who are thirsty and desperate for sex, specifically, I mean, I think men who are thirsty and desperate in general are a big turnoff for women and also specifically when we're talking about sex. This is also a huge turnoff to women. This could be men who have X-rated dating profiles or open up a conversation by being sexual straight away. This typically doesn't land well with women unless you're trying to attract a certain type of woman for a certain type of activity. If you're looking for the hookup culture or the casual one night stand type of thing, this video does not apply to you. That's not what I do on this channel. I don't promote hookup culture or casual sex. I don't think it's healthy for anyone. Uh, so yeah, that's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about- I completely disagree. It's com if it's something you want to experience and go for in your life, as, again, as long as you're honest and open with your, your partners and you're safe, obviously, those are the important things. Now, to get into a little bit about even what she was just talking about there, self-control. Yes, self-control is extremely important. But self-control, so the other, okay, the woman right before Courtney here, the, the TikTok that Courtney is responding to, I guess, talked about how, oh, a man would, uh, could hurt you by cheating on you or by expecting too much of you. There are so many things that that can apply for, and there are so many things that women can do that same kind of thing. In fact, there are a lot of men that are really insecure and worried about if, if a woman is essentially too attractive, she has too many people around them, too much attention, then she is going to cheat on him because, I don't know, they just don't trust women. It, it, it's funny that she ended that, that TikTok also by saying, or they'll be misogynistic. and. Yeah, all of those things can happen, but also that was kind of a, I don't know if I want to say it was a, a, a misandrist way of, of, of looking at that, but it, it, it is definitely a very one-sided thing where you're addressing those kind of issues and kind of, I guess, amplifying, we'll say, concerns women have about men in that regard, and yet there are plenty of things that that same thing could apply to women. Also, it's 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 really weird how a lot of people just talk about this as if women don't pleasure themselves too. Uh, granted, I'm aware a lot of women don't, which is really sad because you should know your own body. You should know what you like. Um, it, it it's very helpful with another partner, especially. You get to you know tell your partner what you like, what you don't like, all that stuff. You get to explore that together and everything, and it's it's fun. It's good, but. I don't know. Right, we'll, we'll just continue. Wanting to attract a woman that will be in a healthy, happy uh, relationship with you. You're not going to get a great woman by having an X-rated dating profile or saying something sexual as the first message you send to her. I promise. So, two things on that. First of all, X-rated dating profile. Yeah, really, even if you are just looking at a hookup, you're generally not going to get quality women, uh, or I would say quality men or whatever you're looking for. You're not going to get quality people if you are being explicitly sexual in your profile and or especially your first messages. To, to put it uh, another way, which a lot of people really need to hear this, genitals are not a hello. If you match with somebody online or you get somebody's number go out and about, you know, in the real world, do not send them a dick pic as your first message. Like, the amount of people that still do that is mind-boggling to me, but it happens. Definitely. Be, be respectful, be kind, be uh, courteous, all that good stuff. It shows a lack of discipline for yourself and also a lack of self-control. It makes women think, oh, this is all he's looking for, or oh, how many other women is he saying this to? But again, if that is all you're looking for, and that's like, that's fine, that's valid. Think with your brain, fellas, the one up here. So why is this attractive? Showing self-control and discipline makes women respect you. And this applies to more than just specifically intimacy. Working out, eating healthy, your job, your success, all of these areas of your life typically flourish when you have self-control and discipline around them. That is true. 
That is true. It is true that generally speaking, if you do have some form of self-discipline and you are working on improving yourself, you're eating healthy, you're working out, you're doing any of those different kind of things, it, it is true that that is attractive. Uh, and those are, those are attractive traits and those are good things to do in general. But going to be honest, it's not the fact that you're doing those things that is so attractive. I mean, look, I am currently, I, I, and I've been uh, dieting and working out for a good while now. And I've been getting in a lot better shape. I'm still far from where I want to be. But I've been, it's a process. But I guarantee you, I know, because I know even currently, it is not going through the process that is making women more attracted to me. It is the results that are happening. You are not going to see somebody and think, oh, they're hot because they work out. Or like, okay, l let me put it this way. You don't see somebody who's attractive and you think, oh, they're attractive. That must mean they work out and take care of themselves. That's hot. That makes them attractive. No, you see that they're attractive. You don't really like you can assume that they have a good lifestyle, but there are people who are just effortlessly attractive without having a healthy lifestyle, without having any healthy habits at all. And for those guys and women and non-binary people, whatever, more power to you, like good on you. But a lot of people really have to work to get themselves to be in a state where they are consistently conventionally attractive. Exhibit A. But this notion, this idea that, oh, the fact that you're, you're trying, like, that's so attractive. Maybe if they're, like, I don't know, you're already dating or something and, and, and your partner says, you know, I'm going to try to get in shape. And then they actually do start, like, eating better and working out. Then, yeah, that might make you more attractive to them. But, again, it's not going to be, like, oh, it's attractive that you're trying. It's No, it's attractive that you're actually looking better it's 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 animal instinct it's just it is what it is and these are all things that are sexy and desirable to women and i want to read you a little excerpt here now that said it is true that it can be seen as attractive for a long-term partner especially if you are putting effort into different things because that could signal to a woman especially Oh, if they're putting time and effort into themselves, maybe they'll put time and effort into me. And maybe they will. But some of the people, men, women, everybody else, who are very attractive are also complete assholes because they're like super conceited and like, yeah, they take care of themselves, but they only take care of themselves. So that's an aspect as well. It says, an ability to override short-term impulses that conflict with long-term goals is a hallmark of successful people. Research has shown that people with strong self-control have better health, relationships, finances, and careers. And then another one here that says, attraction and desire are beautiful and real, but understanding the benefits of self-control communicate that you're committed to her and the relationship long-term. And I do think when a man lacks self-control and discipline with sex, it makes women think, oh, he will cheat. Again, as the woman mentioned in the video, um, he can't be trusted because he, you can't even trust himself. And I know men and women are different. I don't want to- I really, okay. I really don't like this narrative, this idea that, oh, if a man wants to have sex with, say, me, you know, being the, the woman in, the, then they're going to be more likely to cheat on me. No. The formula for cheating is opportunity and, well, desire to cheat for whatever reason that may be. It has nothing to do with, oh, they have, they have no, no self-control. Now, it is fair to say that if they have low self-control or maybe they have problems in other areas, like, say, drinking or gambling or something like that, they may be more likely to take other unhealthy, do, do other unhealthy things. That, that is valid. But if you're with a partner and they are consistently frequently and in my case as it's been with partners always attracted to you 
and uh, wanting to be with you, that doesn't mean that the person, and, and this applies to women too, because a lot of women, and, and this is part of the issue with, with making this kind of a gendered issue where people put this, put, put this on men. There are women who have high libidos. And of course, there are non-binary people who have high libidos too. But there, there are women specifically who have high libidos higher than the man they're with in, uh, in like cis hetero relationships. And they don't know how to cope with that. Uh, n neither of them do because they don't, they don't have this, you know, they have this understanding that, oh, the man has to have the higher libido, the man has to, the man, you know, men are dogs, men always want sex, all those different things. Not to mention how, of course, this kind of narrative is often used to not discredit, but downplay men who face sexual assault and things of that nature. Because if a man is always wanting it, then, you know, how likely is it for him to actually be taken advantage of physically? all around just i you know one of those things where she she definitely means well but harm uh, harmful rhetoric i want to ignore that aspect of it but i do think when a man feeds into these very short-term impulses it can be scary for women especially as a woman when you're thinking about a guy who you want to marry a guy who you want to spend forever with who is husband material this guy has self-control and self-discipline and is able to control those impulses. Um, you know, you can say whatever you want about high value men can cheat and all this, but that is like 1% of the population. Again, this video doesn't apply to people just doing the casual sex. If, I'm not sure what she means. If she means that high value men are 1% of the population or 1% of the population cheat, unfortunately, infidelity is actually extremely common in relationships. So I don't know what she's going on about there or hookup culture because you're not looking for anything long-term or serious so why would you care if a guy has self-control and self-discipline because you don't either as a woman i don't think you can say you want that in a guy if you don't even do that yourself but if you are a woman who is very serious about finding a husband or finding someone to spend your life with and marry you don't want a guy who's out here losing self-control and self-discipline over short-term impulses no, it's attractive and it's sexy when a guy has self-control and discipline in every area of his life. Again, also intimacy included. Another aspect of this is delayed gratification. All right, we'll get into that in a moment. The problem with this, a lot of people will do this kind of thing in general, and it is kind of, I understand why, but a lot of people will project their own what works for them onto other people like she is a woman who values these traits in a man there are plenty of men i i, I see things from men all the time where they they'll say things like oh uh, a high body kind of such a turn off or i don't know something like oh a woman who like there's this there's this very conflicting narrative especially that that women have or that women are told where basically if they hook up with a guy on the first date or too early when dating them, you know, there, there's kind of this question of like, oh, how long should I wait uh, before hooking up? As long as you want. Like, if you want to hook up on the first date, go for it. Uh, to me, that's something that would actually be more preferable because then at least, you know, then you can, you can tell throughout the date, okay, you had the date, you got to see if you emotionally and, you know, um, mentally and everything clicked. And then now you get to see if you click uh, physically as well, if you're compatible. Because again, for me, Compatibility is the most important thing. So I'm wanting to find out if we're compatible. And this isn't an issue for most people. A lot of people, especially these days, are more open to that idea and everything. And, you know, this is very, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very anti uh, slut shaming, which is what that is, by the way. And that's not necessarily what Courtney's doing here per se. It definitely can come off a little bit slut shaming. I'm a big fan of what I what I call slut praising, by the way. Uh, encourage women to uh, hook up with people more uh, randomly or otherwise, because and and just to you know put that really quick and simple, if you're encouraging women to hook up with more people, more men, you're likely to be one of those men eventually. So anyone that has this like, oh, it's like I want them to be a slut, but not for me, and then, and then you have this whole like Madonna whore con uh, complex that a lot of people have with this stuff too it's just again it's it's harmful rhetoric i understand where where courtney's coming from here but the thing is what 
she values in a man and, and even what, what other men might value in a, a woman or what her boyfriend values in her because she does have a boyfriend, uh, things like that, that doesn't mean other people do. You know, what I value in a partner could be completely different from what other people do. I, like I said before, compatibility is the most important thing to me. There are plenty of men out there that are like, oh, I want a woman who can cook and clean for me. I don't give a shit if she can cook or clean. I can do that myself. I will happily cook for us and I will help with cleaning uh, the, our, our living space in general, whether that be an apartment, a house, whatever, right? But, you know, for me, as long as we have that emotional and sexual com compatibility, that is the most important thing to me. That is like the driving force of our relationship. Anything else is just a friendship or a roommate. And I'm not wanting a friendship or a roommate. I'm wanting a romantic partner who I'm really connected with and, and in love with and everything. So, uh, you know, different people value different things. And, and that's fine. That's valid. But the problem is when you, when you put this thing where you say, like, my values, you're effectively saying my values have to be or should be your values. You know, if you want to be happy, you have to you have to have these values too. And that's not exactly what Courtney's saying, but it's kind of what she's implying. I don't necessarily think she's doing it intentionally. I don't think she's trying to harm or do anything like that. But again, this rhetoric definitely has its issues, which is why I'm talking about it. The successful among us delay gratification, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. And this, my friends, can be applied to every area of your life. It's probably a lot easier to stop at McDonald's on the way home and get yourself a nice Big Mac and fries that's thousands of calories, but you'll feel a lot better and look a lot better if you go home and cook a nice nutritious meal. But when it comes to sex specifically here, I think leaving a little room to be desired is attractive, right? Not rushing into this the first date or again, the first time you message her on Tinder is going to build sexual tension and attraction and actually make her more sexually attracted to you. Crazy how that works, right? When you show discipline, and again, leave a little room for mystery there, it makes women want you so much more because they're not thinking, oh, any girl could have him. And again, the men who show no self-control and who are unable to think long-term are often the men who cheat and the men who make poor choices. I was also reading some articles when I was doing... Re okay, just real quick on this. So I want to be clear about my stance on this. I'm not saying that you shouldn't think long term, especially for a uh, for a romantic partner, someone you're looking to commit to and actually spend your life with or anything like that. Absolutely not. What I am saying is that, well, okay, so here's one thing, right? If you're on a date with somebody and they're wanting to hook up right away and that's not what you're looking to do, it's possible at least that you have differing values here. Or if you are somebody who really it if you're somebody who values these things that courtney is espousing here which is totally fine if you do then the kind of people who would do the things that she's talking about wouldn't be for you but that doesn't make them bad people or or, or anything like that and my issue with this is that not what she's saying because there is truth to what she's saying but the framing of it is this, to be more attractive to women, you need to be this. You, you need to be this. This is going to help you be more attractive to women. And while that is true for the type of woman she is, that isn't necessarily true altogether. Some people may be really put off by you not acting soon enough, by you coming off as a prude to them or anything like that. I was told when I was in high school, of all things, one, one, a friend of mine told me years ago, they said, you know, they were like, you know what your problem is? I'm like, what? They said, you respect women too much. I'm like, respect women too much? What do you mean? And really what he meant was that I didn't, I didn't let myself be seen as somebody who was a, an option uh, romantically or sexually. And truth be told, that is something that I still struggle with. And I have an issue with this kind of rhetoric because I think that it is only going to further that mentality to a lot of people. This idea that, oh, if I show interest too soon, if I do this, if I do that, da, 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 it's going to be bad. Look, here's the reality, especially in today's day and age. Generally speaking, if you're going on a date with somebody, 
maybe not right away, but generally speaking, they're attracted to you. And if you, you know, if you really hit it off and everything and you guys are feeling, feeling each other and all that, then generally speaking, you can make a hookup happen out of that. A, a fun, respectful, consensual one. I wanna, <laughs> I'll stress how important consent is as well. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely uh, have something like that. I mean, that's not to say if it doesn't, that you did anything wrong necessarily, you might have, or that the person that you were with is necessarily a prude or anything like There are a multitude of reasons why these kind of things can occur. But the important thing is that you are leaving you are leaving it open to that possibility to say, if I am with this person and sparks fly even just on the first date or in the first 10 minutes or whatever, right? Or if you are somebody who you just want to hook up with someone, all of those things are perfectly valid. So the key to all of this is there is no like time frame or anything like that that you need to wait until you you know actually sleep with somebody but rather you just whenever you're ready and they're ready and you're again being respectful and and you know you're consenting they're consenting you're having all that you're good it, it, nothing else matters research for this video that were more of like the scientific research behind it. And I realized that NoFap, this NoFap movement and semen retention are actually two totally different things. Um, again, I didn't want to necessarily speak on that because I'm not an expert in that area. And also I'm not a man. So I really genuinely don't know what that's like. It would be like if a man was talking about what a period is like, right? Like unless you're a gynecologist, you really should probably just, right? Like I, I'm self-aware enough to know that. But it was interesting because there were so many like contrasting uh, articles and data just based around the whole NoFap or semen retention thing because there's also been a lot of studies done that have showed you know, how masturbation is healthy and good for you. But then also when you think about porn and the negative impacts of that and the addiction that can happen there, that's obviously not healthy. So again, that was really interesting. I feel like that would be a whole different video. Okay, real quick on that. And it might be a whole different video for me too in the future, but I just want to touch on that real quick. First of all, I, I'll, I'll go through quickly and just kind of give my views on, on porn specifically in general. Uh, porn is a tool just like anything else. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. It can be used in any way that the user decides to use it. Like I said, there are issues with the industry. There are issues with the way the models are treated. There are issues with the way the models are recruited. There are issues with a lot of things behind the scenes. You can also mention, of course, that there's a lot of issues that are just kind of the nature of how products are essentially made out of people and these are issues with capitalism as a whole and all this stuff. But that's not really what I'm talking about specifically. If you are somebody who, who views adult content in any capacity, there are a lot of people, and again, growing up in a, with a kind of puritanical view on this stuff, with a, an, an amount of purity culture, I had a lot of this, where basically, if you, view, if you view this to any capacity, they will say that you are an addict. Now, is it true that you can get addicted to porn and or masturbation? Absolutely. But you can get addicted to literally anything to be addicted to something that feels good or yeah to be addicted to something that feels good is just human nature and yes it is lack of self-control and it's not healthy but let me put it this way you a very similar thing can happen with video games if you just play video games for, say, a couple hours a night or a day or whatever, right, um, or on the weekends or anything like that, you know, but you make sure that you get your things done, you, you, you make sure that, you know, you work, you keep your house up, you keep yourself up, you know, you keep all these different things, you take care of the other things surrounding in your life, you take care of the people in your life, if you, you know, the, you cultivate the relationships and you you maintain relationships going on in your life and all those different things, then there's nothing wrong with spending those couple hours, a day, a weekend, whatever it might be, to partake in video games. 
It's the same thing with TV or even porn. It's the same thing with anything. Now, another thing on that real quick, because a lot of people like to talk about how horrible the consumption of it is and how, how oh, it's, you know, it, it, it causes men to objectify women. Just, and again, I might uh, do my own video on this more specifically in the future, but real quick on this, I will say, first of all, a lot of you are just watching the wrong stuff. There's plenty of good stuff out there. A lot of it is female directed, to be honest, but there's plenty of good stuff out there that exists. You just got to kind of dig around a little bit and you can find good, well-produced stuff that is, um, you know, uh, empowering of both women and men, respectively, and things like that. And it is just a fun, good display of adults having sex. Uh, at the same time, for me personally, it has only been a net positive because it encouraged me to open up my horizons more and more as far as what kind of women I found attractive. It's funny that a lot of people talk about how horrible porn is, but they don't, they, and they do to an extent talk about how horrible um, mainstream media is as far as what it kind of shoves in people's faces this is what a woman looks like and stuff like that but for me quite honestly a lot of what porn shows um is what encouraged me to kind of think outside the box challenge what i found attractive what i don't find attractive and things of that nature and it is good to keep an open mind in general uh, especially with a partner and it's nothing to be ashamed of if you uh masturbate you know however often or not often it might be if you do or don't watch porn if you read porn you know um erotica or anything like that uh there's nothing wrong with sharing that with your partner uh should you want to and should they want you to those kind of things right this stigma that exists on really just self gratification uh in general but especially when it comes to you know, porn and different things is really just a lot of it is puritanical in nature. Uh, I, I kind of touched on how a lot of it also has to do, especially these days, with the you know the Jewish question and stuff like that. But there are things that we'll get into in a moment here as we continue the, this video and another video we're going to check out in a minute. There are definitely uh, benefits uh, and aspects to this stuff. Like, look, if you're just all day, like you, you, you you're you're shirking your responsibilities you're you're not having a job you're you know all these different things right because your life is consumed by really anything that you're addicted to whether it be porn video games food tv social media you know tons of different things you could be addicted to then yes you might actually need help but way too many people i feel these days are way too quick to use the term addiction for just anything that they think is unhealthy for people to partake in and maybe they had a personal negative experience with it themselves and that's fine as well that's valid but that doesn't mean that everybody that partakes in something is addicted you know not everybody who drinks alcohol is an alcoholic not everybody who smokes weed is a drug most people don't smoke weed or drug addicts. most people who don't smoke who smoke weed aren't drug addicts so um that's not a really good example but and when people do have you know any kind of issue then yes they might need help with different things and that's perfectly fine but just because you spend a couple hours doing these kind of things or a couple times uh, a week or a month whatever it might be whatever your variance as far as your consumption of any of these products go as long as they aren't interfering with other aspects of your life that's fine you don't have an addiction you're just partaking in something that is something you enjoy and that's valid there's nothing wrong with that uh, because it's more like scientific and research-based versus just uh attraction um so i think that was interesting let me know what you guys think down below if you guys have any experience with that i would love to hear your stories if you'd be willing to share um again you know I'm not a man, so I would love to hear from you on that. But another important aspect of this video that I wanted to talk about is porn and how it negatively impacts men. Okay, I think I, <laughs> I think this is just going to go over everything I just talked about. Let's see. 
men and women. And I found this statistic, which blew my mind. It says, porn makes more money than the NBA, Major League Baseball, and NFL combined. So again, I don't think it's what she's doing specifically here, but this is the kind of thing that signals to the Jewish question. Oh, there's this uh, global elite cabal that is like, making more money it's it's you know more powerful than all these other organizations yeah it's it's 100 uh, percent a lot of it is uh rooted in anti-semitism combined let that sink in i just don't think you can hear that statistic and act like porn is not a big deal because clearly it very much is so then when we're talking about no fap just because it makes a lot of money doesn't make it bad by the way I realized that that is actually different than semen retention. So NoFap, if you guys aren't familiar with it, I just want to explain really quick to make sure we're all on the same page. NoFap is an internet community dedicated to undoing the damage caused by porn addiction and masturbation addiction for a lot of men and some women. So I think that that's a very good thing. I think if you're a person who realizes that you have an addiction to something, finding a community or getting help that you need or just cutting it out cold turkey, mm -hmm. sometimes is the only way that people are able to move on from it and get over it. And I really, again, don't think that we can sit here and say that porn does not negatively affect men and women because it so clearly does. Again, it's a tool, it depends how I use it. But other than that, I do agree with what she said because I do wanna be clear on this too, I'm not, I guess, in a way, I'm I'm kind of anti nofap and, and anti no no November because of what it's kind of become. But if people do again, just like video games, just like anything else, they might be addicted to. If you realize that you do have a problem, yeah, absolutely get some kind of help. And if that help is even an internet community that can help you get out of it, that's fine. Might want to be a little leery if they start telling you how, oh, this is all part of some global conspiracy of this small group of elite people who are doing this to control you. Then, then, then you might want to get a bit like, oh, whoa, dude, like what, you know? Um, but yeah, just like anything else you can be addicted to, of course, if you, if you realize that, that, you know, that there's an issue, then take care of it. Yeah. You know, we've talked about how there are a lot of men who are lonely and single and are then in return turning to things like OnlyFans or, you know, chatting with women online or paying, you know, for porn online. OnlyFans specifically is the one that I've referenced the most. We called it Lonely Fans. Um, but yeah, I think she did a bit. It was her, someone else that did a video called like the Lonely Fans of OnlyFans. And most of that, from what I remember, at least, I agree with pretty much. I don't think it's great how, how people just women more most specifically just take advantage of you know simps lonely, lonely men who are just going to throw their money at them just because they're hot really um but but the truth is what you're really paying for that kind of thing is the um the the parasocial relationship element of it more than the sexual uh element of it that's just kind of the hook as it were but they're wasting so much money. They're spending so much money because they are full blown. And same thing with Twitch streamers. Uh, not, not, not Twitch stream. Well, Twitch streamers and people that donate to Twitch streamers, especially when they like donate a bunch of money to like hot, hot women streamers, like wanting to be their boyfriend or, something. or yeah, yeah, wanting to be their boyfriend or something. Um, I don't think it's great how those people are taken advantage of, but I don't know. It, yeah, I don't know addicted because as humans we just want to feel loved and connected to each other right humans are meant to connect and when you're so lonely that you reach a point where you're paying a random stranger online to either talk to you message you back send you nudes whatever the heck you guys are paying for farts in a jar i mean it's questionable it's really questionable what some of you are paying for um that that lets me know that there's an issue if you're paying for farts in a jar, there is an issue in our society. Yep. Uh, let me just pull up that article real quick, see if I can find it. Wait, was it, was it a 90 day fiance? Whoops. Was it a 90 day fiance star? No. Oh God, it was, oh God, I don't care about. Uh, let me see here. I guess I'll just disable my ad blocker for this. Okay, cool. No. I know how, just, okay. Page, uh, we'll turn them both up just to be safe. Cool. Now I'm gonna get a ton of ads, I'll bet.
Oh my god, here we are. Yep. Cool. Okay, yeah, is this the woman? She actually would sell farts in a jar, and she got sick because of... She would eat this... What, what, what's her name? What is this? Step, Stepan Kamado? Whatever. Yeah, she would... Um, she was selling, um, she would, like, eat certain food, and she would sell her farts in a jar. And people were paying shit ton of money for them. And, but she would have to eat and drink certain things in order to get her farts a certain way, from what she said. And she got sick and ended up in the hospital because of what she was eating, what she was trying to do. All, all, all this, it was a, it was a mess, but yeah. Look, you're, you're more than welcome to, you know, look at these kind of things if you want or anything like that. Uh, I do agree with, with, uh, with Courtney, what Courtney's saying there, but I, I do want to express that the men who are being taken advantage of are not at fault here. They're, they're, they're victims of, of circumstance and of their environment. And honestly, the women that are taking, taking advantage of this stuff they're just, they're just scam artists like anybody else. I mean, you know, there, there's a reason we have the term snake oil salesman, right? There, there, there are things people are going to be willing to buy whatever dumb product or pay for whatever service they think will benefit them in some way. Again, these aren't, these things aren't mutually exclusive. There are people that will still to this day pay for essential oils and think that, or, or crystals and think that that'll solve all their problems or something. So, you know, people are, people are dumb. You just, you gotta be smart and, and not pay for that shit. We can't argue that. Imagine being so lonely, feeling so lonely. I have been lonely in my life. At times I felt lonely, but I have never I will never know what this level of loneliness is like to pay a stranger on the internet. And I don't say that to be judgmental. I truly don't say that coming from a place of, you know, me being mean. I say that coming from a place of sadness. Like that is so sad to me. And just social media in general, I think has warped the way that men and women view each other. And porn is included in that social media, uh, internet aspect of it. You know, and I, I do also think it makes a lot of men objectify women and women objectify themselves. It, again, it absolutely can be. And if you allow yourself to fall into that kind of thing, that is absolutely true. But these kind of things have been said about everything in entertainment forever. I mean, people would say the same kind of thing about uh, women on even like, Sports Illustrated magazines and stuff, and they're not even, those aren't even, like, pornographic per se. I mean, you know, technically, if you want to use the definition of pornographic, that anything that's designed to titillate, then sure, yes, it is pornographic, but you know what I mean. This, this idea that, oh, this is making men objectify women, this is making this and that, and da da da, da. people have been saying that kind of thing for so many different issues, and yes, it is true that, again, you can walk away with those kind of experiences from porn. But again, for me, I don't know, I, I had the complete opposite. I mean, did it encourage me uh, through my consumption, and does it encourage me, I guess, through my consumption to view women as sexual creatures who, who actually desire sex and aren't these like kind of prudish angels like I was kind of taught to believe that they were? Yes. Another thing that it did was it actually helped me to realize that, hey, uh, people who are homosexual, not really that bad, because, you know, eventually I came across lesbian stuff, and uh, I would realize, okay, if I can understand that this isn't weird, then obviously it's not weird for two dudes either. You know, the list goes on, right? So there absolutely are bad ways and bad minds that you can go into when you consume this stuff, but these things in and of themselves are not negative. They're tools. They're tools just like anything else, you know? Uh, a knife can be used to uh, cut a steak or bread, or it can be used to stab your spouse. You know, any tool can be used for anything.
it's really destructive and I don't think it's healthy. I think it also makes a lot of women feel like they need to be performative with sex. Um, and it just really negatively impacts intimacy altogether. And I could do a whole different video on porn. I've done a video on OnlyFans where I covered a lot of that, but it's very interesting. And I think, you know, getting down to the research and the science behind it and really going into further detail could be helpful. Just real quick on that, by the way, uh, the performative part. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> if this like upsets people, I'm sorry, but I do think that uh, if you're, if you're with somebody and you're having a sexual experience with them, a romantic intimate whatever you 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 are in a way and you kind of should be performing for your partner not like over exaggerating and you know the bullshit you, you do see in porn because yeah like obviously that's you know i i don't like by the way when people say that porn is fake because it's not fake it's just uh over exaggerated it's kind of like how a lot of uh sitcoms and stuff like that they're 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 like real life, but they're, you know, they're hyper realistic, you know, they're, you, you get the idea. So, but no, I, I absolutely think that, you know, you should be, women tend to like uh, men that are vocal during sex. And I imagine uh, other women as well. And uh, men tend to like women that are, you know, really involved and expressive and such during, during sex as well. I know I very much do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much somebody who, um, I love just expressing my, my desire to my partner while copulating <laughs> and I love to have that, uh, returned as well. So, you know, I'm just coming up with all different terms. Any, any terms that I can use t to get around, uh, YouTube TOS, although I, it's fun. I, I, I know I'm kind of like back and forth on different things. So I know I'm kind of inconsistent, but it's all good. Where did my thing go? Oh, here we are. for anyone out there who's struggling but I think the, you know the no fap thing is a great thing for a lot of people again because realizing that you have an addiction is a huge thing in itself um, you know whether that be drugs or alcohol or sex there are a lot of vices people use that can be full-blown addictions um, so getting the help that you need for that yeah like video games or food or work or you can literally be, be addicted to anything literally anything is really important and affects your intimate relationships in your life and your romantic relationships so you know working that out with yourself and getting that figured out i do think is really important so i know i covered a lot of different things in this video but really my point was to really cover why sexual discipline is so important and attractive from a woman's point of view and it can actually really help you when you're in the talking stages or you're first meeting women or interacting with women to get a grip like really think up here. I know it's I, I I'm sorry, I have to point out the irony that she's talking about like no fap and stuff like that. And she says get a grip, because like, you know, a grip, you get it. It's tough. I mean I don't know actually what it's like, but I imagine it's tough for you guys. But really I think even I just I don't I don't I I don't like this 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 rhetoric where it's like this is a man problem. This isn't a man like there are women who, who deal with these same kind of things. And of course there are, there, there are, you know, there are trans women, but there are cis women who, who deal with these kind of things too. And this, this narrative that like only men struggle with like, you know, only a man can, can, can have problems where they're say a sex addict or something like that. And by the way, too, a common thing that I've seen, and I'm sure many of you have seen as well, I, I can't remember any of the celebrities off the top of my head, but I've I've seen where celebrities have cheated on a spouse, normally a dude, and they would say, oh, I'm a sex addict. I, I, I have a problem. It's like, no, you, I mean, maybe, but you you made the choice to cheat. Like, I'm sorry, but that doesn't take away from you making the choice I, I don't know just i think people like i said people are, are like way too um ironically liberal with <laughs> what they call a um you know an addiction uh, or not even if you're someone who struggles with this working on it actively working on it and developing sexual discipline can benefit you in so many different areas of your life
not just intimacy or relationships or a sex addiction. Like I really think it can impact you in so many different ways. So again, just wanted to share why it's important and attractive to women. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I do think that she means well overall. I think that she, I think a lot of it is projection and this idea that like what I value in a man, other women have to value too. And I just, I don't think that that's a good way to go about things. So overall, I, I don't really like or dislike it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it as is. But we are also going to cover another video that I came across while pulling this up. I really like this channel, and I would recommend... I'll oh, never subscribe here. Let me fix that. I would recommend channels, really just like this in general, that kind of cover uh, sex ed and stuff in a very honest and respectful way. Obviously, you know, just like any, any YouTube channel, you're going to have the, the clickbaity... Excuse me. The clickbaity titles and thumbnails and stuff but from what i've seen and to be fair i think i've seen like two videos this being one of them higher masturbation technique might be ruining your sex life we might look at that as well in a minute but uh because that is actually valid too some of the stuff that uh she talks about but i wanted to go over because i actually haven't seen this one yet let's see does science support no nut november a urologist explains semen retention it is it's technically whoops no nut november i'm dr rena malik urologist and pelvic surgeon and i'm finally going to talk to you guys about no nut november or semen retention if you're new here i talk about all sorts of things sexual health urologic health bladder health and much much more make sure if you like what you see you subscribe and share this channel with your friends <laughs>exactly is no nut november well it's a practice of avoiding ejaculation for the whole month of november. oh i guess i have to uh point out as well yes obviously this woman is also conventionally attractive um doesn't uh, really take away or add to her message the only reason i added uh i like to mention it with some of the other people i talked about including um courtney as well is because that is important to their message to to grab it to having that male audience that they do. Uh, in her case, I would imagine it's probably more, uh, I think her name's Ramey, is it? Rena. In Rena's case here, I think it would probably be more varied, but, uh, but no, she, she's, yeah, she's, she's attractive too. November. Not to be confused by NoFap. NoFap is actually a website that offers resources and a community for people who are struggling with porn addiction. They do talk about abstinence for some short period of time from certain types of sexual activities, but avoidance of certain types of sexual activities or porn watching is part of their philosophy or what they recommend as far as resources are concerned, but that is not what they are all about. They are essentially trying to help men improve their sexual well-being. So how did this even... Yes. Again, unfortunately, a lot of it does have very anti-semitic undertones and some people in it being exclusively and again I, I can't recommend enough oh he went away I, I i i put the video away it was was it this one i again i can't recommend enough these videos by the cavernacle really good stuff come about? Well, it's been around for a long period of time. In fact, ancient Taoist literature discussed semen retention as a way of self-control. So actually, yeah, actually real quick on this, it's funny she mentions that I am not going to try to find a video or a, a, an image to pull up in, uh, on YouTube here, but there is a, the, it, it was believed even, I believe it was either the Chinese or the Japanese, whoever developed Kar uh, Karma Sutra, where they actually believed if they had sex but didn't actually finish the, the man, it would in it would 
extend their lifespan so that they thought that this semen retention thing was something where it could actually uh, extend years on their life. They believed that ejaculating was actually losing control of oneself and keeping it in or semen retention was actually a way to improve health and control of your body. Proponents of semen retention say there are so many benefits to having increased mental clarity, increased concentration, having better quality sperm, increased testosterone, deeper and happier relationships, and so much more. But I would agree on, and she, I'm sure she's going to talk about some of these things too. I would definitely agree on the uh, increased testosterone. I would disagree on the uh, increased concentration because if you Again, think about it. If you're like really hungry and you haven't had anything, you haven't had that release of that food that you like or any, or any food at all, you're going to be more likely to have anything. So, you know, plus, and this isn't even getting into things like, you know, what, what's known as blue balls and stuff like that either. But is it backed by science? Is doing this safe or can it potentially harm you? Make sure you stick around till the end of the video where I talk about my thoughts on semen retention. The interesting thing about semen retention is it's actually in this specific no nut November is recommended not to ejaculate. That is very distinct from not having an orgasm. So they, people will start and try to have orgasms without ejaculating during this process. So they'll do things like edging, which is essentially the stop and start technique that we talk about for premature ejaculation. Edge, yeah, for those that don't know edging, not just the new uh, single that Blink-182 released, which Real quick, I'm just going to point out because I wanted to talk about this anyway. Edging is not just a uh, single, <laughs> a new, a new, the new song that Blink-182 released, which they're back. That's awesome. But uh, no, edging is essentially where you, and it can be done through masturbation, it can be done th through um, actual sex, it can be done through anything, where essentially you are bringing yourself to the point where you're just about over the edge, uh, you know, you're, you're about to finish, and then you stop. And you, you let that, you kind of repeat that over and over again to build up. For me, it helped me build up stamina, which has definitely been a plus with partners that I've had. And for a lot of people, it's definitely a way to, you know, kind of combat uh, premature ejaculation as Rena was talking about here and things of that nature. But uh, a lot of people also just do it because the orgasm that they get at the end just feels really, really good. And it does as well, but yeah. Or they will do things like try to force retrograde ejaculation by pushing on the perineum and forcing ejaculate to go back into the bladder. People feel that this allows them to have better orgasms and potentially multiple orgasms and longer sexual stamina. So okay, now that one I didn't know. I'm gonna talk a bit about the small amount of data that we have on this practice. And then after that, I'll talk about a little bit about the potential harms associated with semen retention. First, let's talk about the thought that it increases testosterone. So this is a very small study that was done on 10 men in the ages of 22 to 29. And what they did was they had these men on day zero watch a film. And the film was the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes were like a emotionally neutral documentary. In the middle 20 minutes, they showed them pornographic material and they encouraged them or asked them to masturbate and orgasm. They then had them- I hope they weren't all in the same room together. Abstain for 21 days from any sort of ejaculation. On the 21st day, they again showed them the same video. During these videos, they monitored their heart rate and blood pressure continuously, and they also measured some blood levels for every 10 minutes, and the whole process took about an hour. They also asked people to fill out questionnaires about how sexually aroused they were and the quality of their orgasm, like how intense was it, how long was it, and they captured all that information. What they found was that this period of 21 days of abstinence didn't affect any of the physiologic changes that we expect to see during arousal and masturbation orgasm. All those remained the same. They did find, however, that people had better sexual arousal, subjectively felt like they were more aroused and had longer duration and more intense orgasms after that period of abstinence. They also saw that, yeah, that makes sense. starting at 20 minutes, 
that if you look at baseline levels of testosterone, that they actually increased from the 20 minute mark onward during that second period after they had abstained from intercourse or ejaculation for 21 days. You can see that clearly here in this graph, but does that even make a big difference? The thought behind why this happened is that these people probably were more aroused or more enhanced after having these anticipatory cues of the, the video that was coming, the pornographic material, and they got excited more so because they had been abstinent for 20 days. What about sperm quality? Well, there's one meta-analysis that looked at this. All of the studies that were included needed to look at men who were dropping off a semen analysis after a certain period of time during which they were abstinent, and they were required to document how long that was. And there were two things that they found that increased with longer abstinence or greater than five days of abstinence. And that was sperm count and semen volume. The semen volume was studied in 17 studies. And out of those 17 studies, 15 found a significant correlation of increasing abstinence time with an increase in volume. And in 11 studies that looked at sperm count, 100% of them saw an increase in sperm count after abstinence. Yeah, so that, that makes sense too, because and I've, I've, I've heard and seen conflicting things about this, but basically they say that if you are trying to get pregnant, if you're, if you're, you know, you're a couple, you're trying to have a child, trying to get pregnant, you don't want to have sex every day because what you do, it, essentially, if you have sex too frequently, or if you just ejaculate too frequently, you're essentially kind of, well, I mean, you are, you're releasing and, and killing the, the sperm that's there. And it has to kind of replenish and get strong again and all that stuff. So, and I've heard that, but I've also heard the other, other way that, oh, if you, if you don't go too long, it, it, you know, it, you know, if you, you're constantly like using new, new, new sperm, which is going to be more likely to, you know, impregnate a woman, things like that. So I've heard conflicting things about this, but generally speaking, the consensus seems to be from what I've, what I've seen that you you want to go like the longer you go the less potent you are longer you go without release the less potent you are So generally, what do I take away from this? Well, this testosterone study was really on a small number of people and very young, healthy men. So will it apply to everybody? I'm not really sure. As far as sperm parameters, we know that holding off for a couple days. I like that she talks about the actual study, by the way, and she talks about the the values of the study. It's actually recommended in men who are infertile. We actually recommend that during the ovulatory period when you're trying to conceive that you have sex every two days rather than doing it every day because sperm parameters do increase when you have a little bit of delayed time between ejaculations. That's what I was talking about. So what do I think about semen retention or No Nut November? Well, I think if you're getting benefits from participating in No Nut November, like you're feeling more clear, you're having deeper relationships, you're feeling like you're more excited about being with your partner and you're getting more clarity, that's great. Go ahead and do it. Do, not ejaculating doesn't have any harmful consequences that we know of. Your body will essentially resorb the semen that you don't ejaculate out. And so it's not a problem if you haven't ejaculated for a certain period of time. However, there are some concerns that I do have. One is that when you're going through this process, if you're trying to really focus on having orgasms without ejaculation, you can get very fixated on that prospect. You can get very fixated on edging and it can be very hard to have a relationship, a very meaningful, important sexual relationship with a partner because you're very fixated on yourself. It can also cause a lot of stress and anxiety to go through No Nut November. As I mentioned in my previous video on masturbation, there's a number of benefits to masturbation, including better sleep, decreased heart rate, decreased stress, and a lot of increase in feel good hormones. The other thing that I worry about is that people can get a lot of pain and discomfort in their pelvic floor or their testicles. A lot. Yep, that's that's what we're, what we're talking about, blue balls there, yeah. So just real quick on that, and I'm sure she's probably about to get into this herself here, but essentially the whole concept of blue balls and all that doesn't come about where if you just go too long without ejaculating, but it's specifically if you work yourself up and then you don't let yourself have that release. That That's when you have that kind of issue.
A lot of you guys have heard of blue balls. In fact, there's very little data on this in the scientific literature, but it's called epididymal hypertension. And the reason being is that during arousal, you get increased blood flow to the testicles as well as everything else. And usually that's decreased after you ejaculate. But if you don't ejaculate, that increased pressure stays around and can be what we perceive as, or what men perceive as blue balls. And for some people that can be quite painful and it can last for quite a bit period of time. We all also sometimes see men who have elevated pelvic floor tone in men who don't masturbate or don't ejaculate for long periods of time because they're building up all this stress and tension in their pelvic floor that can result in pain. And while there's no data on this, we'll sometimes recommend that these men masturbate two or three times a week just to help with that pain. So I think if you're gonna try to participate, a much healthier option is actually to go no fap, to avoid pornography, which has a lot of potentially dangerous side effects. If you're watching violent porn or porn that's not realistic, it can actually really affect your brain and the way you perceive sex and the way you have relationships with other people. So if you wanna try something new- That was actually a very uh, well done video, very insightful, and even at the end when, that she touched on that there, if you're viewing it in this way, that was a very good, uh, very good way to touch on that as well. I, I liked that a lot. Yeah. So what are my takeaways or what, what, what are the takeaways from all this? First of all, if you are participating in No Night November, definitely do it safely and definitely do it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's good to necessarily do it as like, you know, for the memes or anything like that, but more so if you actually are having if you actually do have an issue with any type of addiction to you know uh porn or it really doesn't even have to be that it just any any i mean really if you have an addiction to anything then like seek help or do whatever you need to to cut that off not you know what i mean by cut that off just the addiction not you, you know anyway um but for the most part you know, as long as you're consuming these things in a in a healthy manner and things of that nature, then I think you're perfectly fine. Definitely, though, if you need help with anything, absolutely check it out. Just be aware as well that, especially in regards to NoFap specifically, there is there are absolutely some dark undertones with that. There is some pretty anti-Semitic stuff there, some JQ uh, kind of stuff. Uh, kind of wrapped up in the nofap stuff again i would highly 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 recommend these videos by the cavernacle and i would recommend other there's some other videos you know um all these different things right so yeah dr debunks no fab you know there's all, all these different things right but as always these are my thoughts please let me know what yours are in the comments down below Follow me on social media for more. Links in the description. Subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. Leave a like if you like. And if not, I hope you find something to do like. Later, guys. Peace and love.